Proudly we hail. City where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Today our story is called Mama. Private Bill Nichols never knew a home or folks the way other people did, but what happened to him only proves that even when you're grown up and a combat soldier, it's still real nice to have someone around whom you can call Mama. Our story in just one moment, but first, fellas, let's talk about your future and America's future. They're important to each other, you know, and to you. Today, your United States Army is charged with a vital responsibility. And to meet this responsibility, the Army is rapidly expanding its forces. They have a job for you, a job that must be done by men of courage. You can get full details of how you may best serve your future and your country's future by a visit to your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Learn all about the benefits you can have in the United States Army. Now, the proudly we hail production, Mama. All kinds of human interest stories that have happened to soldiers in combat. There are so many stories of men who went overseas and met girls they later married while they were fighting in some little town or other. I've heard of guys who encountered little kids orphaned by the war and adopted them. I know a guy who took such a shine to a little mongrel puppy dog, he brought the hound home with him. So I guess it's old stuff when a guy finds a wife or a dog or adopts an orphan kid. But I know a guy who went into combat and actually found a mother. His name was and still is Bill Nichols. He's a platoon sergeant in my company today. Every time I'm invited over to his place for dinner, he and Mama and I spend the whole night reminiscing about what happened to us that time, oh, about uh, 11 years ago in France. Tell you the truth, Bill looks so much like Mama, it's hard to believe he isn't a real son. In fact, Bill's wife is convinced to this day that they're pulling her leg and made up the story to fool her. As a matter of fact, she's always asking me if it's true. All I can tell her are the facts, exactly as I'm going to tell them to you. It was in late November of 44. Our rifle platoon was about a mile back from the line. We were pretty warm and comfortable in the cellar of a farmhouse. I'll never forget. I just received a package from home. I was trying to convince Phil to help me eat the cookies. Now, this might sound as though the cookies might be hard to take, but they weren't. You see, Bill always felt touchy about sharing stuff from the other fellow's packages. You see, he never received any. Any of you guys want some cookies? Help yourself. Hey, you from your gal, Miller? Oh, if Miller don't marry that little gal, I'll marry her myself. Ah, you don't even know what she looks like. She don't have to look like nothing. Y'all can bake like that. It's good enough for me. Ah, don't be a pig, shorty. Leave some for other people, will you? Okay, okay. Hey, Bill, not a bad night, hmm? Oh, it's been worse. We're lucky we can keep one platoon out of the line. This is no palace, but it's better than a foxhole. Let's just hope it'll be our home for a while. Hey, Sarge, home was never like this. Mm. Yeah, home. What's the matter, Bill? Don't you feel well? I'm okay. You look a little bit down in the mouth. <sighs> I was just thinking... About what? Skip it. Okay. About what you said about home. Oh, yeah? Nothing. I guess this crummy little cellar is just about as much home as any place I've ever had. Except I don't have to pay any room rent for it. <laughs> you mean you never had a home, Bill? Hey, it sounds awful quiet out there. Too quiet. Hope nobody's getting any ideas. Well, you look what the wind blew in. Huh? Oh, if it here. isn't Conley, the best company clerk <laughs> in the army. Where's Phil Nichols? What are you doing out here with the soldiers, Connie? 
Hey, Conley, don't you know there's a war going on getting back to regiment before you get your feet wet, huh? Hey, Nichols, I have to talk to you. Yeah? What's the matter? Your papers aren't in order. Yeah? Yeah. You never did fill out that line. Which line? The one I've been telling you about since the States, the one that says next to kin. Now, it's got to be filled out. I don't have any next of kin, so how can I fill it out? Everybody's got some next of kin or at least an emergency addressee. Well, I don't. What are they going to do, throw me out of the army? Well, you can put down the name of a friend, can't you? If something happens to you, we have to notify somebody. I don't know of anybody who'd care one way or the other. Look, give me a break, will you? Why should I have a set of papers that aren't complete? (laughs) All right, Connolly. I'd hate to think of you losing any sleep. You guys at Regiment lead a tough enough life as it is. Uh, Write down John J. Jones, RFD number one, Coitsville, Nebraska. Got it? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Nichols. Hey, Connolly, what's the latest dope? Yeah, when's the war going to be over, Connolly? So long, fellas. Gee, Connolly, they're going to envy you back at Regiment. Just think, you was almost at the front line. Hey, Bill. Who's John J. Jones? <laughs> Beats me. I never heard of him. I don't even know if there's a Coitsville, Nebraska, either. Ah, uh, but why should Conley be unhappy, huh? <laughs> Is that on the level, Bill? Isn't there anybody at all back in the States? Now, if you don't cut it out, I'm liable to tell you the story of my life. Well, it's just a... Well, I guess I never met anybody before who didn't have anybody at all. Well, sure, there's the landlady, but she's probably rented the room by now and wouldn't remember me anymore. Guys I worked with at the office, had a couple of beers with from time to time. A couple of girls I went out on dates with. Nobody'd really be broken up about me one way or the other. Hey, hey, I bring tidings of, uh, of great joy. Oh, oh, the voice of doom. Get out of here, Slim. There's trouble tonight. How about a look on that one's face? All right, wise guy, can I help it? Hey, Sergeant Miller, the old man wants you at the CP. Is it uh, what I think, Slim? What else? Okay, I'm coming. What else could it be? A patrol, naturally. It seems that in war, you can never be happy. If you're fighting, you can understand there's plenty to worry about. If you're not fighting, if it's quiet, that's worrisome, too, because you wonder why. It's true that there's nothing the enemy can do that makes you happy. If he's shooting at you, it's bad. If he isn't shooting at you, it's worse, because then he's got you guessing. Well, that's one of the times when you have to get a patrol out into his lines to find out what he's up to. Captain Blaine gave me the news as soon as I got to the CP. Sergeant Miller, we need a patrol and it's your squad's turn. No fighting, try to get us a prisoner. This should be old stuff to you by now, so I don't have to tell you anything special. How many men should I take, sir? All we want is a prisoner, and you've done it before. How does it work out best for you? Well, personally, sir, I uh, favor myself and two men. Okay, take two men from your squad. Actually, there's nothing at all I can tell you about the terrain, since you know it better than anyone else. Situation hasn't changed at all since you were out last. As a matter of fact, everything we know about the way the juries are situated is based on the information you brought back last time. Now, if you take off within the hour, you'll have plenty of time till daylight. Any questions, Miller? No, sir. Good luck. Jackson, get word to the outpost and tell the line we'll have a patrol out. Work our way in through the woods. You can see this point on the map, which is marked 18, can't uh-huh. you? Now, right past there is a little gully. Yeah, well, where's the outpost, Miller? About 50 yards in front of it, but we'll be way over to the left. Where can we expect to bag somebody? Well, they got foxholes dug all along through here. I know there are machine gun squads in front of the gully. Well, what are we going to do, try and grab one of the machine gunners? I never tried anything like that, Kramer. They got two, sometimes three guys with each gun. Now, you run the risk of getting into a fight, which isn't our business at all tonight, because if we're spotted, we'll be out of luck. Now, what we have to do is work our way in, hide, and jump somebody who's out by himself. Now, what I want you boys to do right now is study the map. Learn as much as you can about the terrain. What are we going to carry? As little as possible. All right. You know enough to leave all papers and stuff like that behind you. We'll go light as we can. Don't have anything on you that jangles or makes noise. I borrowed carbines for us from the CP. They'll be lighter and easier than the M1s. When are we moving out? Half an hour. Okay. I have time to get off a quick note to my gal. And since we've got no guarantee that this is going to work out our way, one of us or all of us might wind up a prisoner. I don't have to remind you guys. 
All you have to give is your name, your rank, your serial number, and your date of birth. Hold it. Don't make any noise. Where are we? Well, if I remember all this, I, uh... I think we came back too far. Miller. Down past that rise, I think I saw buildings, houses. You sure? Yeah, positive. Oh, and well, I guess we followed the gully too far. This should be the village of Saint Therese. So where's the main line? Well, maybe a mile in back of it. Trouble is, it's so dark out tonight, I can't... Miller! Huh? What? Listen, somebody's coming. Hey, that's one of our songs. Can that be a German? Huh? Oh, sure, sure. They love our tunes, especially if it's got a South American beat. He's going to come right past us. Kramer, you have your carbine ready. Bill, you hit him low, I'll get him high. Now get set. All right, suck him. All right, don't worry about him. I'm sitting on him. Too bad he was able to get that shot off. What do we do now? I think anybody heard it. Everybody heard it. Let's hope nobody wants to make something out of it. All right, Friedrich. Now, you say nothing. Gar nix. You got it first day, Friedrich. Or mine a carbine. All right. Bang, bang. First day, Friedrich. Friedrich! Y- yeah? What's this? Uh, gar nix? That was very good, Friedrich. I don't think we're going to have a single bit of trouble with Friedrich at all. But just to make sure of our boy... Let's tie his hands. Put a gag in his mouth. Oh. Bill, you got his pistol? Hey, Bill, what's the matter? No, oh, Friedrich must have hit me with that lucky shot. You hit? Where? Right in the ankle. Kramer, keep this one covered. Yes. All right, Bill, let me bind that up for you, huh? Now, come on. Swallow down your tablets. It feels numb. Yeah. Yeah, he got you, all right. Yeah. Let me put the dressing on for you. I'll tell you what you better do, Miller. Uh. You and Kramer get Friedrich back, and I'll... Well, I'm in charge of this patrol. I'll say what we do. But I can't walk. I know I can't put any weight on this foot. Now, how are you going to get me and the prisoner back? Make sure that gag is firm in Friedrich's mouth. Mm-hmm. His hands are tied tight. Kramer, I'm going to stick with Bill. Try to help him back. Uh-huh. You, take off with Friedrich. You think you can make it? <laughs> Give it a good whirl. Now, Friedrich looks like a nice, intelligent fella. I think he knows the situation. He'll go quietly. Now, you stick to the gully... They'll let you out in the woods. And bear left, way left, so you can miss their outpost. Yep. I think you're crazy, Miller. I weigh 200 pounds. How are you going to lug me all the way? Now, this way, you and Kramer have a better chance. Take off together. Do you think I'm going to leave you here? Don't worry about Kramer. He's got Friedrich under control. All he needs is luck. It would be the same whether I was with him or not. All right. Come on. I'll help you up. Oh, come on. Now, lean on me. Now, don't put any weight on that foot. Don't worry about that. All right. Now, one step at a time. That's right. Hey, Miller, Miller, hold it. Let me down. I feel kind of dizzy. I'll have to carry you, that's all. No, you can't. I'm too big. Hold big. still. I'll get you on my back. Oh, oh man, you weigh a ton. We won't make it. We've got to make it. Now, set me down a minute. I want to talk to you. All right. Uh, look. Look, right now we're lucky. Nobody spotted us yet. Maybe we can even get as far as the line and... And then what? Now, be smart. You got a chance of getting back I yourself. I said I wasn't going to leave you here. Well, do you have any choice? Tell me. Do you know where we are now? Yeah, that's the village of Santa Teresa in back of us. Yeah. A mile in front of us is the line. Okay. Where can I hide? Hide. Yeah, it's going to start getting light in maybe three hours. We're sure to be spotted. Now, here's my idea. If I can find a place to hide, you leave me your canteen and your surgical dressing, and maybe tomorrow night, if it's good and dark, you can sneak back with two or three guys in a litter. If you can't, who knows? Maybe by then our outfit will attack and push the Jerry's out of here. What are you going to argue with me about? I can't walk, and how far can you carry me? Just to the right of the village. The country is pretty wild. There's thick woods, lots of places, maybe. I... Well, it's my only chance, Miller. Now, come on, before it gets light. <laughs> Let me put you down. Yeah. Oh. 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 This looks like as good a spot as any. Yeah. How's the leg? Well, this is any better. 
trying to get an idea of where I am. I want to be able to, to recognize this place again. All right. I don't think anybody'd come poking around here, not with all these trees and bushes. You better take off while it's still dark. You're not home free yourself yet, either. I uh, got a chocolate bar here and some cigarettes. <laughs> okay. I keep the leg still. I'll come back for you. I know, although it's a waste of time. Nobody'd miss me anyhow. Don't talk like that. Just rest. I keep as still as you can. Uh oh. Somebody's come. Don't make a sound. If it's only one of them, I can handle them. But this is no good. I didn't think there'd be any Jerry soldiers around here. Sounds like he's coming right in. Shh. I'm ready for him. Today, your rapidly expanding United States Army needs intelligent young men with ability and ambition. Men intelligent enough to recognize the vital need for a strong armed force. Men with ability enough to be trained in a necessary job. Men with ambition enough to secure the future for themselves and their loved ones. Does this description fit you? Can you qualify? For full information on how you can fit in with the finest, check with your nearest United States Army recruiting station. Sergeant Pete Miller is recounting an episode of the Second World War in France. On patrol, his buddy Bill Nichols has been wounded in the ankle. They are behind the German lines, and Miller is unable to carry Nichols back by himself. So instead of going forward, they have painfully made their way deeper into enemy territory toward some wild and wooded terrain, which they have found a secluded place for Nichols to hide. Both men hope an attack will be mounted soon, which will push the Germans out of the area. If that won't happen, Miller then hopes to return the following night with a litter squad and try to rescue Nichols. However, both of these hopes have no meaning right now because evidently the chosen spot is not as secluded as the men thought. Someone is coming. He's coming right at us. Can you see him? Not yet. Ah, Bonnie. Holy mackerel, it's a woman, an old woman. You, you are not the Bosch? You, you are American. Be, be, be still. No, 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 there's no one here. You like that, an old French woman. Oh, so old. Old enough, perhaps, to be your mother, but not old. Any Germans around here? Oh, they are thick as thieves, all about. At first, I thought you were German, so I came past. I had an excuse prepared. I was to visit my sick sister. Hey, your, your comrade, he's hurt. Yeah, yeah, I can't walk. Oh, that is no good. How will you get him past the bush? Well, I, uh, I thought I'd leave him here and come back later with help. Leave him here? Oh, no, no, no. It will be cold. Too cold. And while there are no bush here at this moment, who is to say that some of them will not blunder along? Oh, they are experts for coming around where they are not wanted. Ah, oh, if I'd only known of this even ten minutes ago. Why? I have just come from a meeting of a group of the Maquis. I have bought them food. And they could have cared for him. But they have gone away now. Bad luck. You, uh, you feel sick, eh, little one? Oh, I'm, I'm all right. Let me look. Oh, he is not at all good. Mm. Behind that dirty face, he's still a boy. <laughs> now, now, there is one thing we must do. My house is not far from here. He needs a warm bed. Well, you can't take him into your house. And who says no? Is it not my house? But suppose the Germans find him there. And suppose they find him here. Yeah, but... Whatever we do may not be the best, so let us do what we can. There are no soldiers billeted in my house. If they should come in, well, perhaps there is a way to fool them. Come, you and I, we can lift him. Oh, get him out of his clothes quickly. You place him in the bed. I will get some water. How you doing, Bill? Oh, brother. Is this a bed? Oh, let me in there. Oh, a bed. Hey, a uh, lady. Uh, uh, Marie uh, Dupont. But everyone calls me Mama. Well, uh, listen, Mama. Uh, what will I do with his clothes? Yeah, his gun, his belt, his helmet. You take them with you. You must go back. Now, remember, 
you keep to the woods. Make the large circle to your left, and with luck, you should reach your lines. Okay. Now, Bill, I'll try and get back with some help. Good luck, kid. I'm in bed, Sarge. I'm warm, and I'm happy. <laughs> you need luck. Goodbye, Mama. Oh, it would be nice if you could persuade your army to attack this town and liberate us from the bush. I'll see what I can do. Now, you take care of them. The coast clear? Mm -hmm. There is no one in sight. Go now. So, little one, you let me look at this ankle, eh? Mm. Hey, hey, take it easy. It is a scratch. Uh. You will live. I have a little milk. Yeah, you drink. Uh. In the morning, perhaps we can get the doctor. So, what is your name? Bill. Bill Nichols. Bill. Mm. And that is what the English call William, no? Yes. Mm. My son, my oldest boy, he was Paul. The younger was called Edgar. You have two sons? I had. They both fell before the Bosch in 1940. Oh, I'm sorry. You have brothers at home? No. Oh, bad. Very bad for your mother to be alone at home. Well, I, I don't have a mother either. A father, perhaps? I was raised in an orphanage. Who's that? I do not know. Be still. Pretend to sleep. Oui? Search the house. The cellars are attic every place. Madame, we have reason to believe a patrol of Americans are behind our lines. Have you seen any Americans? Unfortunately, no. You're a brave woman, although a little foolish. Who lives in this house? I do, and my son. My son Edgar. That is he, in the bed. Hmm? Your son? A big boy. His father was a big man. A strapping fellow like that? Why was he not in your pitiful army? And why is he not now in a prisoner of war camp? Unfortunately, he could not serve. He has been blind from birth. Niemand, Herr Leutnant. Your name? Marie Dupont. Your son's name? Edgar Dupont. You both have your identification papers? Oui. I will look at them? Of course, I will get them. Look. Mm -hmm. Marie Dupont, age 48, height, color of hair, eyes. Ah, here we have Edgar Dupont, age 23, height, weight, disappear in order. Very well. Now, if you see any Americans looking about, you will come and tell us. No, we. Oui. I will run to tell you. Excellent. Good night, madame. They are gone. <laughs> they have no sense of humor. Perhaps if they had, all might have been different. You showed him papers. What kind of papers? <laughs> Little one, this is what is called the occupied France. All civilians must have identification papers. But you had a set of papers that had my description. Oh, the Germans insist upon papers. So with a printing press, one can make all the papers one needs. I am fortunate he did not look in that drawer. For in there, you would have found all sorts of papers. You are tall and blonde, we have papers. Were you short and dark, we would still have papers. But we talk too much. You must rest, sleep. Sleep, little one, sleep. Say, uh, Mama, could I have a drink of water? Oh, oui. Here, I, I have a pitcher near the bed. Yeah, I will hold the glass. Uh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't drink so fast. Good. Now I, I will be sitting here beside you, and you must sleep. Hey, what, what, what is, is it, little one? Oh. Oh, I, I had a nightmare. What time is it? Five o'clock. You see, it grows dark outside. Did I sleep all through the day? Uh, no, you you were not well. But you will be better now. The doctor was here this morning. Then it was no dream. You were delirious. What did the doctor do? 
He took the bullet from your ankle. Oh. He says there is no infection. Soon you will walk and be sound again. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Miller can get back here tonight. I hope so. He did not come last night. What do you mean last night? We got here last night. Oh, no, little one. That was three nights ago. Three nights ago? How long have I been out? Since Tuesday. This is Friday. As I say, you were delirious. The front has been quiet, but each night I have heard rifle firing. Perhaps your comrades could not get through. Meanwhile, you were safe. Hey, Mama, was I delirious all that time? Did I... did I say anything? Oh, you said much. I hope I didn't say anything stupid. No. It was very nice for me to hear. What did I say? Oh, you... you said something to me I... I have not heard a boy say for a long time. You kept calling me Mama. Well, I hope you didn't mind. Mind? Oh, it sounded so good. Yeah, I guess it did. Oh, oh listen. The cannon on fire. In... Wait a minute. They're not going. They're coming. That's our shells. That might mean an attack starting. Unfortunately, the shells do not recognize friends from foes. We had better hide in the cellar. Marie, can we stay in your cellar? It sounds as though uh, they will soon be fighting in the village. We oui, will oui, come in. Everybody come in. Uh, Pierre, uh, Jacques, give me a hand with this one. We must have him downstairs. Uh, but who is this young man? Who? What? My son, of course. The following day, our battalion drove the Jerry's out of San Therese and occupied the village. We picked Bill up and had him sent back to the hospital, which had been set up ten miles back. Mama was right. That firing she'd heard at night was us. We were trying to get through to Bill, but we were always being spotted. Anyhow, it turned out all right. Because, as you've already found out, Bill was in mighty good hands. When Bill was in the hospital, I guess I don't have to tell you, he had a certain visitor every day. He was the only guy I knew of overseas during the war whose mama came to see him. Here's an important announcement for capable and ambitious young women. There are many fine career openings in the Women's Army Corps. If you're between 18 and 34, a high school graduate, single, and otherwise qualified... The Women's Army Corps offers you an important, interesting future while serving your country. You visit your nearest United States Army recruiting station now. Get all the details. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army, and this is Richard Hayes speaking, inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>